Trail runners, welcome back to Chasing Gold Black Canyon Edition back in the desert here. We're chatting with some of the front runners coming down here for the Black Canyon 100K, trying to get themselves one of the two golden tickets into the Western States Endurance Run. Today on the show, we welcome Ida Nielsen. Ida was just at the World Championships for Mountain Running in Thailand. She's got a third at CCC. She's got wins and a second place at the Uber Competitive Ultra Van San 90K and a win at Transvolt Canary. Ida, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Ida, where do you live and where do you train out of? I live in Norway, in Romsdalen. So I trained a lot of skiing this winter and uh, some treadmill runs, uh, few road runs. So it's uh, nice to come here now. It's snowy flag stuff where you can just run on the road as well. No, here <laughs> you can actually drive away quite easy to find some trails. Absolutely. Um, obviously, and Give the listeners an idea. What is the temperature in where you are living right now? Yeah, it depends a little bit. It can be from uh, almost around zero degrees Celsius to minus uh, 15, minus 20. Ooh. But yeah, it's um, kind of in the middle of southern uh, Norway or middle of Norway. So it's not like super, super cold, but it's snow in the winter. So now coming down to the desert, get some sunshine on that body. It's going to feel good, I bet. Yeah, it will be nice. Yes. I just had my first uh, trail run today in Sedona, and it was so nice to run trails again. Oh, that is great. Beautiful area up in Sedona, and we have some lovely weather. So I'm glad you're enjoying, enjoying the time thus far in Arizona. Let's talk about training. You have won some pretty big events and you were just at the world championships how is the training going i know those championships were just what was that two months ago so could you talk to us a little bit about how you've been training how many days a week what the volume is what kind of workouts you might be doing can you kind of just talk us through what what uh how that's looking coming into black canyon yes um yeah after uh, thailand i had a few weeks uh season rest and then I started training again, and um, it was some weeks before the snow arrived to Norway, so then it was just like a little bit mixed of running and some mountain runs. Uh, but since the snow arrived, I have been uh, skiing a lot, and uh, added some uh, treadmill runs, road runs, and I think I run a little bit more this winter than normally, but it's still uh, just around maybe 60 to 70k a week. So the main uh, hours have been like skiing so maybe i've got to be like 20 to 25 hours uh, of ski each week and then uh, a few hours of running wow that's a lot of hours of aerobic work you must be coming in pretty fit i like it and have you ever ran or raced in the desert before um yeah down there i did the king scramble in 2019 so I guess it's not really, but it's kind of in the area. So, so I think that's only um, close to Phoenix race there in the desert I've done. Yeah, that is the uh, mostly uphill race. I saw that result and you had a very good run there. Very similar. That is just uh, that race is coming about a month after Black Canyon. So the climate is is pretty similar. So it sounds like you've, you've done it before and you've had six, some success. What about on race day? Can you kind of walk us through what does a typical race day look like for you in terms of fueling and in terms of nutrition? How do you get that right on race day? Are you drinking sports drink, gels? How does that all that look? 
Yeah, like I usually it's early start, so the ultras so I just get in some coffee and a quick breakfast. And uh, luckily you can do it quite close to race start because the ultras you don't have to really swim. It's good to be kind of full when you start. And um, what I eat is like kind of a random mix of gels. I um, don't have a gel sponsor, so I don't have a, one specific brand I use. I always get some uh, gels from different brands and uh, have a mix of it and then um, with sports green. So it, I'm not picky like that my stomach, yes, I get some enough sugar and calories in, it's fine. So that would probably be this race as well. I, I brought a mix of old gels and I will buy some new ones here. Nice. So, so, but I will practice and try to eat like well and a bit more um, yeah, then I do sometimes in racing. I can be a little bit lazy with nutrition sometimes. Sure, sure. Uh, speaking of sponsors, I didn't put in our intro, but I know you're running with Craft Sportswear, Moon Valley, and Silva. Moon Valley and Silva are those. What products are those? Moon Valley is my own brand, together nice. with Yumi Kotka and Emily Forsberg. So that's uh, sports nutrition, but we make bars and uh, sports drinks, uh, but no gels so far, but that might come. So I'll probably drink some Moon Valley uh, sports drink at least, but uh, maybe not the, the bar during the race. It's like more for uh, training before and after. Sure. Cool. Well, that's a nice venture. And how do you balance that? Are you, are you working a lot uh, on the Moon Valley side and you can balance that with the training? Yes, we are uh, all very active in the company, so that's a really nice uh, project we had the last uh, three, four years. <clears throat> awesome. And coming down to what is a hotter climate, did you do any tra heat training in the sauna while you were still in Norway? No, we don't. I thought to have a good sauna there. I missed that. But um, I've done all, uh, some hot yoga now the last couple of days. and. I'm not so worried. It's not so warm down there now, and uh, I'm usually pretty good in the heat. So I never really heat train before warm races. It, it goes quite well for me. Sure. And let's let's imagine here we are at the start line of the Black Canyon 100K. We have some very fast runners, yourself included. How do you? The field usually goes out pretty quick. How do you approach that situation on race day? Are you someone that's going to want to run with the lead pack or are you someone that's going to run their own race regardless of where you are at the start and see what happens at the end? No, I race with people when I race because I think that's uh, the fun thing with racing. It's, I'm not the person that's like, oh, I'm just going to keep my pace doing my own race because then it could just be a time trial. So that's a part I enjoy with racing. So I usually try to go out there and be in the mix. And also I think it's, uh, you can't expect people to explode if, to, if you let away the lead pack and they might be running well the whole time. So it's, um, in case, I feel like it goes way too fast. Of course, I can feel a little bit my capacity that this I can't keep up for 100K. But otherwise I uh, enjoy that to be in the mix and uh, see, see what people are doing. So I will probably try to go out with the lead group. Oh, I love it. Yeah, last year in the women's race, we had a very exciting race with Dominica leading the way almost the entire way before Claire Gallagher caught her near the end. And it sounds like you're going to be going out with that lead pack. So we wish you luck out there. It is There is a lot of people that end up dropping early. You've got the experience. I got faith in you, Ida. You're going you're gonna to hold strong till towards the end. Um, Thanks. And coming down, you have. Will you use crew and pacers? Uh, yes, I haven't. Uh, I just started thinking of it today. It's like that, um, I don't have a pacer, and it would be nice to have one. So I'm going to look around now. It's like stuff and see if someone can do a little bit, one piece at least. It's the first time for me to have a pacer because it's just an American thing. Sure. And uh, of course, I could just run by myself, but it could be a nice thing. I think in the end, to, if someone wants to to do it have a pace especially if i'm by myself at that point if you're running with other people i think it's fine because the race is interesting enough in itself but otherwise it can help a lot i think to have a pacer the sure. last 40k 
Sure, it, it's uh, it's an interesting debate on the Pacers. I am on the on the side of I'm not sure Pacers should be allowed in championship races, but they are in the United States, so many people use them, and I do think they can be advantageous. So we'll chat after our interview. I am almost certain we can find you a Pacer through our community if you would like one. But we'll chat about that. We'll chat about that a little bit a little bit after. Yeah. Um, and Western States, you have never raced that event, correct? No. So never. going there would be a very exciting first big Super Bowl of America Ultra running uh, at Western States. If you do get that golden ticket. Um, Ida, are you ready? We're going to ask some questions, some fast pace questions here in the fast pace fartlek round. Are you ready for these? Yes. All That's right. Great. Question number one, what sneakers will you be wearing for the Black Canyon 100K? That I don't know yet. I'm racing for a new pair I might wear, but maybe a pair I have here who's the Pro Endurance Trail. So it probably will be a Dodge pair of shoes. Okay. How about when, what was your first ultra marathon and what year was it in? That was Ultra Vatan 2015, and I got through it in by some friends the day before the race. I was going to run the 45k, and that was actually my longest race at that point. And then they just entered me in the 90k, and I thought it was um, kind of ex yeah interesting experiment to see if I could do it. And that felt so, so long at the time. I was more like, oh, maybe I just have to stop and start working, or... I didn't even know it's like, oh, is it possible to just keep running that long? And then I realized that it's, it's quite easy. It's all about the pace. And uh, you, I went out to conservative. And um, so, so that was my first race. Got it. I am going to leave these questions for one second. In your background, did you, did you grow up as a skier and a runner? Do you have a big base of aerobic work doing these two sports growing up? Not skiing. That's uh, a sport I learned uh, late in life. But I, I was a track runner, cross country runner, so I did that uh, until about 30 years old. And then um, I kind of had a break in my life where I didn't do any sport. And then uh, around 35 years old, I started with trail running and uh, uh, skiing. Awesome, great. Okay, how about this one? If we let you choose a song to start the race, do you have a song that you would like to listen to at the beginning of the race? I don't know. No, I, no I, I'm, I'm good with anything. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, the Black Canyon 100K is known to either have very, very hot years or very wet years. If you had to choose between the two, would you prefer a very hot year or a very wet year? A very hot year. All right. No, no wet trails down there. It's like terrible. <laughs> you get the elephant juice and rain doesn't do good in the desert. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. How about this? A guilty pleasure. So when you are in the supermarket every week, do you have any food items that you put into that grocery cart, like cookies or ice creams that maybe you wish you didn't eat every week? Uh, I need to have uh, coffee and chocolate at home, but I don't think it's a guilty <laughs> pleasure. I eat it every day, and I think I, I feel good of it. And uh, so I, I don't see it uh, as a treat or anything. I, I I like to eat whatever I want, whenever I want, if I feel like it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, what is the first word that comes to mind when I say Black Canyon 100K? The golden ticket. Yes. Okay, question number seven. Do you have any race day superstitions? No. Nothing. All right, if we do get one of those hot sunny years, will you be racing in sunglasses or no sunglasses? No sunglasses. All right. Question number nine. Do you have any secret weapons that you will use in the second half of the race? Coke, caffeine, Red Bull, maybe music. No, music I never listen to in a race, so maybe that would be the first time then to pick me up. If I don't 
really antisocial. I get a pacer and then I start to listen to music. <laughs> yeah, that right. That's very nice. <laughs> Yeah, Coca-Cola, that is my that is my secret weapon in the second half. I feel I every race in the second half at the aid station, I'm always drinking Coca-Cola. Yeah. All right, last question. We are putting you on the spot here. What place are you going to finish the Black Canyon 100K in? I hope we far. Yes. Or at least you think it. <laughs> I love it, Ida. Thank you for coming on the show, and we will see you at the Black Canyon 100K.